This web-based class course has specific objectives, so let's go through those now. We're going to discuss and review literature considering motor learning principles and try to link these to clinical practice. We're going to review the anatomy, mechanisms, and importance of vision and rehabilitation and discuss both the benefits and the detriments. We're going to discuss different types of feedback and different types of practice that are typically given in learning environments. Then we'll attempt to link learning to immediate real-life clinical applications. And then at the end, we'll present and discuss research-based applications of assessment and treatment for proprioceptive deficits found in the head, neck, shoulder, trunk, and the knee. Our future modules, two through five, will go into depth in each of these body regions. But for the first module, you'll get a taste of what's to come. Hi everybody, this is Eric with Motion Guidance and welcome back to module two of this five part series titled Maximizing Performance with Visual Feedback and Motor Learning Principles. Hopefully you've already seen our first module in this series and we talked about several key aspects uh, for that particular topic, diving into the research on different types of feedback and motor learning principles as well as other things. I mean, those key points were creating triple play scenarios for movement and exercise applications, developing ideal arousal, establish variable practice whenever possible, and mix the type of feedback provided as skills are learned and motor planning is established. So we take these recommendations with us into Module 2, but Module 2 is focused on the assessment and treatment of dysfunctions and decompensations involving the head neck area and performance options for normal and asymptomatic clients as progressions uh, for this area. So we know from current research and uh, literature findings that joint position sense errors and dysfunctions occur after injury in four main areas of the body. In module two we discuss the head neck area, in module three we get into the shoulder, module four addresses the knee, and Module 5 uh, addresses the lumbosacral area. So let's get going on Module 2. The objectives for this module include uh, determining and reviewing mechanisms and effects of concussion and whiplash, reviewing ocular motor training options uh, for this population using the motion guidance device, and we'll be talking about saccades, times one and times one viewing, which is our VOR, uh, joint position sense testing and assessment, motor control training for the head neck, neck stabilization exercises using visual feedback, and dynamic and athletic applications. Let's get started. Hi everybody, this is Eric again with Motion Guidance and welcome back to Module 3 in our five-part series discussing maximizing performance with motor learning principles and visual feedback. Module three is gonna be discussing the shoulder. We're gonna go through various aspects related to joint position sense at the shoulder, uh, maximizing performance with different types of training. Um, and our objectives for this particular module are to, of course, review the literature and see what the literature says about joint position sense error at the shoulder regarding uh, normals, uh, people who are hypermobile, uh, also those that have uh, post-trauma uh, like dislocations and those that present with uh, shoulder pain. Uh, so then we'll talk about assessment and how to go through that uh, using standard assessments with proprioception and more importantly how to use the motion guidance uh, system uh, to help aid you in determining if a joint position sense is present and then we'll get into some treatment options. We are going to uh, talk about uh, proprioceptive training after that. Uh, the assessment has gone um, through and been completed. And then we'll do closed kinetic chain options, open the kinetic chain options, and we'll even uh, show you how to look for unwanted movement patterns. So let's get going. Hi everybody, this is Eric with Motion Guidance and welcome back for another installment of Motion Guidance Moments. In these segments we take about an hour to discuss different topics in the body uh, that have motor control deficits and also most importantly how to utilize the Motion Guidance Visual Feedback System to improve 
uh, these conditions for your patients. So today we're going to spend uh, some time around the knee and we're going to discuss treatment options in motor control deficits of the knee after ACL, injury, and other post-operative conditions. So during this hour, we're going to discuss uh, functional movement screening tools and prevention programs that are in the literature for the lower quadrant. We're going to discuss the pros and cons for those, review current factors surrounding ACL injury, present the current literature evidence of where and when motor control deficits occur in this population, we're also going to discuss return to play parameters uh, and possible factors that might influence um, how your uh, patient or your athlete returns to the playing surface. Inside of that, we're going to define motor control and motor learning and discuss its importance in movement. And then, of course, uh, what everybody's here for is give options for observing and treating these deficits and how to coordinate all this data into getting the most out of your patient or your athlete. Hi, this is Eric with Motion Guidance, and welcome to our hour-long educational installment on treatment options in motor control deficits of the lumbopelvic area. Over the next hour, we're going to discuss the definition of motor control, how we want to use it specifically for this topic, discuss its importance in movement, present literature evidence of where and when motor control deficits occur in the lumbar spine, and give options for observing and treating motor control issues. We hope you enjoy.